It's Darren Fink with Transfiguring Adoption. And you guys hopefully didn't just stumble upon, hopefully you were planning to be here. This is our Monday caregiver check-in. We do this every Monday at 6.30 Eastern Standard Time. And this is, let me tell you what it's not, because I find that um, for some reason people identify more when I tell them what it's not. This is not medical advice, it's not legal advice, and it's not a way for you guys to uh, come on here and, and see if we'll get, get you uh, justified for going against your caseworkers or your agency workers or the other professionals in your life. We wholeheartedly believe that you need to follow the professionals in your life. We're going to point you to the professionals in your life. And uh, yeah, we're just here to encourage each other and hopefully through the encouragement and through getting some cool advice from other professionals, we will be able to parent our kids better than when we came in here. I want to say hey to Christy um, so much. Hey, okay, Christy, how you doing? Um, so we are going to talk tonight, and Madison's on here. Hey, guys. We're going to be talking tonight about essential oils. Now, for me, for my wife, this is like, her and her friends, like, this is life. Like, this is like, let's talk essential oils. And Every I'm, time you talk about Margie, I think I really need to meet this girl. Oh my goodness, she's amazing. You have no idea. She, Margie is a, uh, my last tangent. What, Melissa and I were going on tangents before this. She, she keeps our family from living in a cardboard box. Like it's, it's just, <laughs> yeah, that, it's that simple. We live in a house because of her. So, um, hey Luke, so glad that you could join us. Um, she's just, yeah, Margie has introduced me to essential oils. She has a plethora of ones that she sampled. Uh, she would like go through and she'd be like, go through with the kids and put it on their neck or their different spots in their body and say, oh, this one's for calming. This one's for attention. This is, and, and, and it's, it's all, it's not lost on me. I love, I use them, but I don't have a lot of information on it. And you guys that are watching might be in the same boat where there's been a lot of stuff going on about essential oils. You might not understand exactly what they are, what they do, how to use them, which is good that you're here because uh, Melissa is here with us today and she's gonna be talking with us about essential oils. Um, but I will say you guys, the way the caregiver check-in works is this is your time as caregivers. So all of you guys, Christy, Madison, Tammy, hey Tammy, Luke, this is you guys' time to be asking us questions, ask um, us anything that you want to know, or, or if there's something that we need to talk about um, that you need help with, let's talk about it, just comment. Um, but other than that, we're gonna be talking about essential oils until you guys stop us. So Melissa, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? You've been on with us before, but I want you to tell yourself for the new folks here. Yeah, thanks so much for having me back, Darren. I uh, live uh, currently shelter in place in Maryland. <laughs> As most of America. As most Sheltered of America and the world, really. Uh, and we have six kids through birth and adoption and a granddaughter. Uh, we have four of those kids still live at home with the granddaughter. And let's see, I am a parent coach and I am a brain science nerd. So I am really passionate about helping parents find brain-based solutions to their behaviors. And specifically, you know, because of my history with adoption and foster care, serve a lot of adopt adoptive and foster families. Um, and then I'm also an essential oil specialist and educator. So Ooh, that's a new one. I didn't know about that. Yeah. It's a like. closely I guarded secret. <laughs> I knew you knew about it, but I didn't know the title that went with it, I guess is what I was getting at. I didn't know there's a title. I know. The, the essential, that's awesome. So tell me, can you tell me for like the, the, the people that like are like five years old like me that have no clue, like what, what are essential oils and what are we talking about here? It's such an important question because when I was coach, a baby parent coach five or six years ago, I was talking to a mom and she said, really, I think you would love essential oils for a family. And I was like, 
oh, this is how, like, this is my paradigm. I was like, aren't this, this things that like plug into your wall and they kind of make your house smell good. And I yes, was like, that's what I would have thought of. Right. And so I was like, what is she talking about? Like, I literally had so little knowledge. You know, they say the curse of knowledge. Like when people know about something, they talk about it. They don't talk about it in a way that is helpful for people who don't know. And so she was suggesting this thing. And I had this image of what this thing was. And there was like no way that I could figure out that it was going to solve a problem that we had been talking about. Like I just thought, but I knew she was intelligent. I trusted her. She was kind. So I knew there was something. I just couldn't quite figure out what it was. <laughs> right. Right. So, so where, what, so, I mean, I know it's oil, but like they, they, what, can you tell me more like essential oils? And I know there are different scents and there are different things like that. Like what, like what, what's like a rundown for like, for essential oils for dummies? What, Essent what, yeah. Because that's me. That's me. Right. <laughs> I well, love those books. Right. So essential oils are all a lot of the things that we think of in terms of smelling good. They come from different parts of plants and they are the things that give plants and nature their smells, right? They're like the smell of a rose if you walk by or uh, coming into summer, my favorite, favorite time, if you're taking a walk and you smell like the honeysuckle in the air, right? That's the plant releasing its essential oil. And huh. The essential oil of plants is in some ways, like it's like lifeblood. It's essential to its survival. And it is the way that nature kind of communicates in this obviously nonverbal way, right? So flowers have a certain scent that bees instinctually know to follow or to go to. Um, certain animals know what to eat or not to eat based off of these smells. And so they're communicating. They're also doing things like protecting the plant from disease. So like Arbor Vitae trees are grow in the uh, Pacific Northwest, I think. And they're known as the tree of life because they live for like forever. And the, one of the reasons is, is that they're very, very pest resistant, right? Like they don't house termites, they, all these things. So it gives a plant its properties, like the reason that it's like cool in nature. And some very, very smart people thousands of years ago, figured out that we could use these, if we extracted them, use them for health benefits, kind of not unlike we use herbs, like herbal medicine, okay. right? That we know that plants are powerful and we can use them to help our body. The essential oil is, an, is just like that, except it's way, way more concentrated than using the herb. Okay. Wow. I've never had it explained that way. And you know, it's interesting is uh so a lot of people don't know one thing that i do part-time is i teach uh a lot of people that are watching actually might do it too is i teach english online to chinese students and one of the lessons we actually have to teach is, is on bees and how they communicate obviously through their body language and smells and scents and different things like that so it's interesting when you're talking about like those scents are a way of communication because that's essentially like i i, I have to teach that like but that other things when they can't talk and use verbal language they use other means to communicate uh with different things so that's interesting I know. Um, there i'm glad i'm glad i connected to something that you already knew so no you're putting, i know you're like, putting all the pieces together <laughs> <laughs> it's all coming together i know you're like yeah I, i'm telling you the dummies books are my books i need those i learned so much so what what are like why i guess take take me further then what what are these oils that we're looking at what are like how do they help yeah why why should y'all care right is that what you're trying to actually ask let way? me go ahead i mean christy's <laughs> asking it better than me so let me just tell you what christy's saying christy's saying what is the best way to use essential oil uh dermally warmers jewelry because you were talking about that's one thing too like what she was saying is when you said you thought about the things that you plug in that's how let me tell you where I connected it with is we have cats. And so when they're nervous, we think about like, they have a little diffuser thing you plug in yeah. to make the cats calm. Right. So right. that's what I think of when I think of essential oils first. Yeah. So essential oils can be used for lots of purposes. They can be used for cleaning. The reason why I'm passionate about them in my coaching business though, is because they are really good for some physical applications, but they're also really good for managing mood and emotions, which of course we work with a population of kids and also adults, right? Who are experiencing a lot of complex stresses. And of course now uh, that's been magnified by our current healthcare situation. 
Absolutely. Um, so to answer Christy's question, um, what are the best ways? So it really depends on what you want. And so there are three ways to use essential oils. You can use them aromatically. So that's like that aromatherapy, that's the smells. And there actually are, they don't just make your house smell good. Um, our nose is the only one of our five senses that goes directly to the feelings part of our brain, really? bypassing the cognitive part of our brain. So uh -huh. if we touch something, right, we think about what, like our brain is going to think about it. And then we're going to have a feeling about what it is. Like it's going to go, that was a rough thing, or that was a sticky thing. And then it's going to go, oh, right. Whereas with a smell, you have, have you ever been taken back to an experience with a smell? Like you smell it and you've been instantly transported. No, I was totally thinking about that, actually, because there's uh, fond memories of going to an amusement park in Branson, Missouri, with my family year after year. And when you were talking about that, uh, like I'll tell my wife, whenever I smell either wet asphalt or <laughs> wet um, cedar wood, I think I it, think of that amusement right park. There. Yeah, right. And we don't even have to think about it, right? You're there before you ever cognitively think, oh, I smell wet asphalt. And that reminds me of that time that we went to, right? You don't go yeah. through all those steps. Like you're just like, boom, there you are. Or you're having a feeling, or you get the sense of like your grandmother's kitchen, baking pies growing up or whatever that thing is. So we can um, use that thing that our body does. It's called anchoring and huh. use essential oils to anchor certain thoughts, feelings, and emotions. Um, and then there's actually even more chemistry behind it because really our emotions in our body are chemistry. So we have neurotransmitters in our brain, which a lot of us who have done a lot of therapeutic parenting know about. And things like cortisol make us feel stressed and things like dopamine make us feel happy. So emotions have chemistry behind them and essential oils affect that chemistry instantaneously. Um, and so besides that anchoring effect, there's also a chemistry there. So that's the first way to use oils. The okay. second way is to use them topically. So essential oils have itty bitty tiny little molecules, right? Because they fly through the air very easily, which means right. they're absorbed by the skin or they can be absorbed by the skin. And okay. so that means that we can use them for a variety of um, health concerns by using them topically. So um, they can support our skin, they can su support our digestion, all the parts of our body, all the systems of our body through the skin, which is also great because have you ever tried to like get a child to swallow a pill or take a medicine they don't like the taste of yes. or get the eye drops in for, you know, eye infections? Like it's a pain, oh my right? goodness. So what it's if excruciating. You, it's excruciating. So like, what if you could just rub something right here or rub something on their belly that would have the same effect as whatever we're trying to shove into their body. Right, exactly. Um, and then the third way is using them internally. Um, so we can put a drop under our tongue, we can take them in a pill. And again, they're going to process like other pharmaceuticals um, with a lot of benefits and none of the side effects usually if used properly. So Christy, real quick here, Christy's wondering, she said, by the way, I want to say hey to Felicia real quick and Jeremiah and Elena for being on here with us. Um, Christy's wondering, she said, my oldest son has ADHD and I've wanted to find a secondary option to use when he has meltdowns. Is that something uh, that we can use essential oils for? Absolutely. So here's one of the myths about essential oils. Obviously, they're a huge rage right now. Lots of people are trying to sell them, which means they might tell you some things that are not 100% true. And so you'll have people telling you that essential oils will fix everything, that the magic thing, right? I just put this on my kid when they're having a temper tantrum and poof, magically, they went away. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there um, are definitely oils that you can use for regulation they are not magic fixes. And so that's what I'm really, really passionate about because I want there to be a balanced message. They are a super powerful tool in your toolbox, but don't believe all the crazy people that say that they will literally solve all of your problems. Like it's a new child afterwards, a few drops and it's a new child. Right now, I mean, that happens sometimes, but I find that our kids who have come from trauma, who have come from complex trauma are very complex, which means they need <laughs> 
complex solutions, right? And so right. it's probably going to be a little bit more complex than a drop of something. Um, that being said, when you pair that with therapeutic parenting skills and the understanding of the brain, they are really, really powerful. So um, meltdowns, you definitely wanna think about what is causing the meltdown, keep a journal, think about triggers, and then we can use essential oils as a piece of that toolbox. I mentioned anchoring earlier. Um, I recommend that we use essential oils kind of proactively as part of a foundational piece of our parenting so that we're not just throwing them at our kids when they're misbehaving or having a meltdown, right? But they're part of our like integral process of what we do every day because they're going to work better um, in those emergency situations if we kind of already have a foundation, but also we might not need them as much if, again, we're using some techniques uh, and introducing them to our family, almost like brushing our teeth, like we do right. every day, no matter what, even if everyone seems hunky-dory. So, okay. So, uh, hey, Andrea, so glad that you could join us here. So if you guys are joining in with us here too, just so you guys know, we're talking with Melissa Corkum. She is the creator of the Essential Oils Boot Camp for Foster and Adoptive Parents. Um, so uh, yeah, get your questions in. I don't know how much you guys know about essential oils. If you're like me, you know next to nothing about essential oils. So I'm so glad that she's here. She's already taught me a lot. Um, Christy is saying, she's talking about her son. She said uh, that he's medicated, so he's fine most of the time, but he does have some days where he gets too stressed. Yeah, so I would definitely recommend, the great thing about essential oils, especially when you're using them aromatically or topically, is there's almost no counterindicators for other prescriptions and medications, and definitely not for the class of medications that we use to manage things like ADHD. So you can use these in conjunction with what's already going on. And so I would recommend having a uh, routine where you're either diffusing oils at the times when stress tends to happen. Um, and then that means that they'll be familiar with them. And so you can also use them additionally when things are stressful. Like we use them kind of all the time, but I know we've been using them a lot more given the current circumstances. <laughs> right, I wonder why. Um, Felicia said, I think going back to something else that you had said about being proactive, she said proactive is her favorite word. Ooh, and proactive. Felicia, I'd love to know like some of the ways you've been proactive or if you use oils, what are your favorite proactive ways to use them? Um, so my question was, is when we were talking, you were talking about how we were talking, using the example of like how I might pair like wet asphalt with some childhood memories and different things like that, like going to an amusement park. So how... Do you know, how does that work then? Like if I put on peppermint essential oils, does that, how, does our body automatically think, oh, I, this reminds me of a time that I was calm, so I need to be calm. Or does it work like that? Or is it like, is it almost like, uh, I'm almost thinking like Pavlov's dogs. Like I'm like yes. conditioning my kids like, hey, we're calm right now. So I'm gonna put this on you. And then every time I put this on. Yeah, it's a little bit like that. <laughs> so. <laughs> I actually do an entire day in the boot camp uh, about this. And the boot camp is 14 days. It's delivered to your inbox and it's short videos uh, because I know y'all don't have like hours every day, right? So it's mm -hmm. it, only exactly the information that you would need out of the essential oil world to apply to your situation. I think the videos run from like five to 15 minutes. Um, and most of them are like five to 10 minutes. So we cover anchoring like a step-by-step -step protocol for how to do that, but you're exactly right. W what we do is we take what we know about chemistry and we pick an essential oil that tends to lend itself to calming and de-stressing. Most of them do anyway. We let our kids have a lot of control, shared control, because we don't wanna force them into anything. And then we start introducing and linking this scent to situations, feelings, experiences that are positive. And so that means that just like that West asphalt takes you right back to that moment, right. we can create an anchor uh, for our kids. And like I said, there are no magic fixes, but it can be a really powerful part of helping our child's brain to reset when they have an anchor to a place that is calm and regulated. Because a lot of our kids, it's like, um, it's like the breadcrumbs, right? 
they've lost their way. When they are not regulated, they have no way to get back. And so this anchor kind of leaves some breadcrumbs for their nervous system to say, oh, mm -hmm. I know how to come back. That's interesting. I like that word picturing with the breadcrumbs. That's neat. So then, it, so I have a lot of people, I, I, I know like we have like a big box of essential oils and they have on it, it's like A plus attitude, this, 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 this. If, if, there, if no anchoring has been done though, is that kaput then? Like, is that, is that like one of the lies that, that people are kind of telling us like always use lavender for this or always use this for that? Um, so the always use something for something is tricky, right? Because we're all different. And some of us may, even though lavender has chemistry that generally evokes calm chemistry in the brain, some of our kids may have negative anchoring patterns to a particular scent, right? And so maybe lavender isn't a great scent because maybe someone in their past wore lavender and maybe mm. that's not an anchor we want to use. So we have to be really careful that always is works for everyone because I don't believe that that's true, um, which is I think why, you know, we don't need the entire, you know, collection of 400 oils. Um, although I, I'll say it's really helpful. Um, I do have like <laughs> a, a, a decent size box, right? But, but everyone should start with a collection, right? Like, I think what's really dangerous is we're like, my kid has an anger issue. So we get online and we look up essential oils for anger and someone's uh, marketing, you know, peaceful and calm child and says, this is like what you're going to need. And so you pick that up and you bring it home and you try it. And it's not quite what all the testimonials say. Right. I would rather folks start off with the basic, like 10, have some, because they're so versatile, right? So the, the right. nice thing about essential oils is, there are, if there's one for calming, then there's 20 for calming. And if one essential oil can be used for calming, it can probably also be used on your skin and to boost your immune system, right? So there's a, you're getting a lot of bang for your buck, but you want to, again, be able to have the flexibility to honor your own chemistry, your own nervous system, your own experiences, um, to be able to find the solution that is going to work for you and for your child. And it's very hard to do that with this like, um, like shot in the dark approach. Like, I'm just going to go grab that one because someone said it would work. And I'm going to grab that one. Um, they're super safe if, if, if pure and if used properly. And we talk about safety in the course. Um, but that means that you have a lot of flexibility to kind of experiment, right? You don't have to wait six weeks to go back for med check. Um, it, it just, it's different than uh, how we kind of look at like medication. Huh. So is it something where you said maybe get like 10, like start off with 10? Because you were talking it for, before you were talking like there were 200 or something, you know, something I mean, there's, like. right. There's, I mean, think about how many plants in nature there right. are, right? So there's quite a few oils out there. So it's best to start off with just a few. And it sounds like, it sounds like something like what you're teaching with your five minute videos is pretty essential because it sounds like you're really going to be able to give people, um, I guess the information so that you can get the most versatility out of the oils. Absolutely. Like say, so you can make 10 different individual oils really work for your kids. Right. And for your family. And, and again, not just for mood and emotional, like right now we're all really concerned about our physical health. Right. And so, right. and our options are limited, right? We are not supposed to leave our house as often. We can't run to the drugstore as much. A lot of the drugstores don't have the supply that we thought they would. Our, our doctors are saying, unless you're dying, right? Like don't come right, see us, right. right? So a lot of our power, we feel very powerless in situations where increasingly we have less freedom and more restrictions. And so one of the things that's been very helpful for our family is to know that we have our little set of oils, right? And to say, okay, we feel confident that, I mean, obviously they're not gonna fix like cancer or a broken leg, right? But right. For, there's like, you know, we to boost our immune system to make our own hand sanitizer to deal with the kind of everyday things that our kids come down with that we have the power since we're quarantined to handle that um you know on our own without feeling like we have to be you know dependent on something that's outside of our you know resources out of resources right now 
And it sounds like something like what you were talking about earlier too. I'm going to go back to the scent and it, and it transporting you and, and, all, and all the neuro that goes on. It, it sounds like during a time like this where we're kind of, we feel out of control, we feel anxious, being able to have that anchor where we're putting on an oil and it suddenly transports us back to grandma's house with having fun and making chocolate chip cookies and different, like that's where you want to be right now. Like right. you want to be in that mindset where, or what, obviously maybe it's not grandma's house for you baking chocolate chip cookies. I never bake cookies with my grandma, but something like that. You want to be transported to a moment like that in your head so that you feel less, less anxious and you have good feels during a Right. Time. It gives us a lot more power over managing our emotions in a time where we're being really taxed and challenged to keep our emotional stability, right? Like we all have extra things that are kind of knocking us out of homeostasis mm -hmm. in our emotions. So we need all the tools we can get. <laughs> Felicia says, we try to be as proactive as possible and prevent meltdowns before they happen. So when our toddler is beginning to show signs of stress and anxiety, we like to diffuse bergamot. Bergamot. Yeah. Oh, thank you. He loves taking deep breaths of it, of it while having his joint compressions and sensory brush. And that's uh, the sensory brushing, man, we've had to do that. That's some, that's some time there. Yeah. But like what I love about that, right, is she's being very attuned to what's going on. Try to catch it before it's like a level 10 meltdown versus, right, we're ramping up. If you're familiar with zones mm -hmm. of regulation, right, we're more in the yellow, we're high energy, but we're not out of control energy. And she's not just throwing an essential oil at him, right? She's using it in conjunction with some sensory input and some other tools that they have that she knows will bring him back into regulation. Absolutely. So what are some, like with, with people feeling anxious and out of control right now, what are, can you come up with like an example of how you would use oils right now? Yeah. So therapeutic touch is really, really uh, important. Touch, you know, activates a lot of chemist, neurochemistry that tells us that we're safe. Um, of course, we're not touching a lot of people we don't know, but within our families, right, we can still be um, touching. And what's interesting is this can be really tricky with our kids because touch has not always been safe for them. Right. And affectionate touch, if your child struggles with attachment, is going to be even trickier and probably rejected. At least that was the experience for our family. And so touch becomes something that's a double-edged sword because it's very important, but it's also very triggering. And so therapeutic touch has these beautiful qualities that are not necessarily affectionate touch, uh, but a huh. warm enough touch that all of the benefits are there a lot of times without the triggers. So it's, a, it's just clinical enough to not trigger, but just warm enough to have all the benefits. And so uh, I teach on a specific hand massage technique because it's very rhythmic. It's repetitive. We do it the same time every time. It's pretty short, under five minutes. You can do it anywhere. You can do it with essential oils. You can do it without essential oils. Essential oils is going to add a lot kind of up the ante, of course, on the level of power it has, because you're going to be able to access that anchoring or just the chemistry of more calm feelings. But these are things that we can do, you know, routinely throughout the day. If you have a really fragile child, maybe you need to stop and do these at the top of every hour. Uh, if your child kind of is more stable in terms of their emotions, maybe you do it before bed or when they get up in the morning, maybe it's just once or twice a day. Um, but this can be something that is really, really helpful. Um, also diffusing, uh, putting oils into a cold air diffuser. So warm, warming oils changes our properties just a little bit. It's not gonna make them dangerous, but we'll get the best benefits if we diffuse them using an essential oil diffuser and you can find those at well now amazon's probably the best place since we're not going to target we're not going and to Bath target and beyond and all the all the we're things not, right? we're not going anywhere we're not going anywhere so um putting them into the air uh so that we're all breathing them in and having them support our brain chemistry you know for the entire family is also a really great way to incorporate I, them i like especially what you're talking about because that's something that had slipped my mind and i hadn't even thought we're it's funny how uh, on when you're on the foster care and adoption journey, like when you come from places, you forget where you've come from sometimes. And one place we've, 
I've forgotten where we've come from is what you were talking about with touch and touch being a problem. Um, <clears throat> but that's so, I, I like that though, because you're right. I feel like if I'm massaging my child on their, on their hand or somewhere with oils, it does, it seems clinical. It seems like something like, okay, we need to put the, like, it's almost like I, in my head, I'm almost equating it with there's an ointment that I have, like the doctor prescribed and I have to put it on now. Right. Like a skin thing. And here's how clinical it is. And not to kind of be weird, right? I've done this no. for strangers. Like I've been on airplanes yeah. where people are clearly struggling and I'll say, Hey, like, can I give you a little hand massage with some oils that I think are going to help you feel better. Right. And so it's clinical enough that I can do this. Of course I wouldn't do it now with social distancing. Right. But I can do this <laughs> right. with strangers on an airplane and it's not weird. Right. Right. No. And I feel like, yeah, cause it's a hand massage. And I feel like too, like the hand is like one of those places to tell I me mean, we handshake and we do different. So doing a hand massage isn't like, it's, it's not in It's, it's tender enough for connection, but it's not, um, but it's clinical, like you said. So at the same time, so I, I, you're not getting the weird feels about someone invading your privacy or invading your territory. Right. And you don't have to like give really intense eye contact. You know, I tell, in fact, I tell families who have kids who struggle with attachment, like look away, like have them be watching a movie, you know, like there are ways that we can create a little bit more distance. We can, if, if you have a three-year-old who has been with you since birth, they'll probably love you know, getting close and making this a little bit more intimate, but you definitely can do it to a kid who's, you know, off doing something yeah. else. <laughs> <laughs> Playing video games with one hand. Yeah. <laughs> Natasha says, be sure it's pure essential oils and not the blends from Walmart. So, and you were kind of talking about, a little bit about the, the kind of oils too, right? Right. So all essential oils are not made equal and they're not super regulated. And so you can't always believe all the things that you even read on the packaging. In Do you mean that people are trying to make money off of this and give us substandard product? I don't know what you're talking about. In America? About. Oh my goodness. I know. So I would just say, and I talk, like I said, I do a whole day on this in the boot camp, but you know, a simple guideline would be, uh, even though these are super safe, they're super powerful, right? So we, we want to be able to access the source of where we're getting them to ask questions, right? So if you have a question and you can't reach me or the person who sold you the oils, you wanna be able to reach out to the company and say, hey, this is happening. Or I have a question about this oil. Is it safe for this? Could this happen? I used it like this and this is what happened. Um, you know, if you can't get in touch with the customer service place of the Walmart essential oil company, uh, then that's gonna be a problem for you, right? You wanna be able to get, go directly to a manufacturer and get, uh, really specific answers and and some science behind it. So I'm hearing you say too, that you need to really watch this. And it sounds like you need to have someone that's, that is an expert like you that knows how to use this stuff. Is there something that we need to watch? I mean, cause for me, I'm the person that does something first and then I ask questions later. So is, am I going to get myself into trouble if I do that? You could. So research shows um, by people who are not in the business of making money off of the sale of oil. So it's important that it comes from a third party that 80% of the oils on the market uh, are adulterated either on purpose or by accident. Huh. So that you have a very high percentage of getting something that's not exactly what it says it is in the bottle. Interesting. Okay, that is kind of dangerous. <laughs> um, especially, yeah. Uh, especially when you're dealing with something that you're massaging into your skin and into your body. You want to know what you're putting into your body. Um, Felicia's wondering, do you have any brand recommendations? So I am loyal to a brand called doTERRA. And in full disclosure, I do sell those oils uh, because I want people to have the best access to them and I can provide the best training through them. Uh, they have, they're the number one respected oils in the medical community with a lot of medical partnerships. Uh, they have a new set of health initiatives where they're creating holistic telehealth initiatives um, all across the world. Uh, but I, the essential oil boot camp that I teach is 100% brand neutral in the sense that like, if you're already committed to a essential oil brand and you feel safe about them, or if you have oils from wherever you've gotten them, or if you already use doTERRA and you need a source of information that is specifically for you and your family, the course will still totally 100% work for you. Okay. 
and let's see here can whoops i just lost my comments here okay and i wanted to say hey to mindy and kitty for coming in here thank you so much guys haven't seen you guys in a while i guess it's been a few yeah. days so glad that you're here um so can you tell us real quick and and this is not you guys this is not your time to to kick off the show and be like okay i gotta put the kids to bed we're still going here so if you guys have not done the show before get your questions and comments in here but melissa uh i guess like i'm gonna do one comment from uh, mindy here and then i want you to tell us a little bit about uh your essential oil boot camp and how we can get connected with that because i want to have some time to to be able to put in the comments how people can get connected with that while, while you're still talking. But Mindy here says, uh, uh, she's used essential oils a little bit, but not regularly. She has a few faves, lavender, and I can't even say that. What is that? Melaleuca, also known as tea tree oil. Oh, tea tree oil, okay. That I know. Say I actually like the smell of tea tree oil. Isn't that weird? Like, I, like it doesn't like spark anything. I just, I think of uh, fun exotic stores that I've been to overseas when I smell that. Oh, There's my that's anchor. that's interesting, yeah. yeah. Well, and you, here's the other thing, never give up on a, an essential oil as your chemistry changes, the way you experience it will change. So I've had some that I've loved in certain seasons and now I don't love them as much and others that I couldn't stand when I first smelled them and certain thing, you know, stress levels, amount of sleep, your nutrition, all those things yeah. were always changing. And so um, never give up on an oil. Well, just what you've been talking about with anchoring is totally changing my mindset with essential oils now. Like it really, like I'm sitting here like with it, like I'm having an Oprah aha moment. Cause I'm just like, <laughs> I'm like, okay, that makes sense. Like it, it, it is a little bit like we're, we're creating a connection with our brain with a smell so that that helps communicate to our brain or our emotions. Like, Hey, this is how we're, this is how, this is what's going to happen right now because right. you smell this. And, and it's that is it's going to be more effective. It's going to be more effective than just using like, um, like a perfume or something, right? Because the oil's already chemically helping your brain go to a place of calm and regulation. So it's, it's just a double, a double whammy. And you said too, it, it bypasses our cognitive and just goes straight. Like we're, we're straight just there. Emissions. Yep. That's amazing to me. So it really does. It, it is a game changer in a way because it's, it's like you said, it's not going to be a magic pill, but it definitely does give us another tool in our toolbox to, to empower us. Right. From, the, from the little bottle to your nose, straight to your limbic system. I mean, there aren't very many stops in between. No, that's awesome. Wow. Well, you guys get your questions into Melissa here. Uh, she's been great. She, she's just like you guys. She's a mom also. She's really, she had, her, her time is taxed. So we are so fortunate that we have her here tonight. She loves being with you guys and talking. So get your questions and comments and in here. Um, but Melissa, we're gonna get to these comments here. Can you tell us about your essential oil boot camp? Yeah, so it again was designed with you guys in mind, thinking that there you're being barraged with messages about essential oils and your brains are tired. And I thought, well, what if there was a very easy, way for you to get just the information that you needed that was relevant to you, um, helpful, but not overwhelming, mm -hmm. delivered in kind of bite-sized chunks because no one has time for an hour long webinar or long, long trainings. So it's a 14 day boot camp. It's delivered to your inbox. It's yours to keep once you get it. So if it takes you more than 14 days to go through it, also completely okay. There is a special binge link at the bottom of every email because sometimes you sign up for these things and you just happen to have an hour. And so you can binge it all the way through. I mean, really, I tried to think of every situation that I've been in when I've tried to look for solutions for our family. Um, I have a special offer for your folks tonight, Darren, because yeah. we love your community and what you guys are doing and, and all the things that you're doing to support foster and adoption. And um, your fun movie nights during, he was all saying, during our quarantine. <laughs> so um, if you guys go to the corkboardonline.com, which is my website, and then forward slash hoot oils. So all spelled out together. So H-O-O-T-O-I-L-S. Then you'll go to a special page where you can get, um, it's just a dollar a day. So $14 to go through 
the boot camp. And hopefully that'll be something that you guys can use. There's a whole day on oils for relieving stress and anxiety, if that feels like a thing. There's a whole, um, there's a day dedicated to therapeutic touch and where I do a demonstration and teach you exactly how to do that. So if that feels like it would be helpful to you in this season, uh, then go ahead and take advantage of it. Absolutely. And you guys don't even know how much of a resource you have with Melissa here because she is, she has experienced uh, everything from all different angles because you were in our kids situation and you are a mom and she has all the education and different things backing it too. So she is coming at everything that we need you guys at all different angles and she knows exactly what she's talking about. She know, I mean, it's not, not just here too saying that we're bombarded with things. We don't have time for this stuff. Her emails and different things that she designs are completely designed for us in mind because we don't have time, but we might have an hour at, for a fluke. We might be in a doctor's office and be able to, to put head, headphones or have time to read or whatever. So we can actually get to an hour worth of information. So you guys need to totally, uh, take advantage of this and uh, take a look at this. Um, get those questions in too. Um, is there, Felicia's wondering, is there a self-care piece as well? So there's definitely a part that says, start with yourself. Um, I do an entire parenting boot camp um, where that's the foundation of it all. That's a behavior, uh, how it's a behavior, plan system, if you will. It's called the real life behavior plan system. So the self-care piece is included in the oils piece because honestly, we only have control of ourselves and we can't force our kids to use oil. So like what I did uh, learn from my mistake, right? Is I was like, oh, oils, they could be helpful. And then I was like, oh, kids, oils, this is what you will use because <laughs> these will fix our lives for good. Like we're going to get out of our crisis situation with these oils. Um, and of course that didn't go well because our kids are um, like, it's like, uh, Murphy's law, right? If we want it, they don't want it. It's like reverse psychology. So I talk a little bit about that Felicia, um, in the, in the, in the course. Um, so, and Darren, I'm looking at the course. It's actually not a code. Like if you put in the corkboardonline.com slash hoot oils, it'll take them right to oh, the page. Slash hoot oils. Okay. Yeah. Oh, let me edit that. Yeah, it's all caps, right? Um, nope, all lowercase. All lowercase. I might work in all caps. I don't know, but I know it works in all lowercase. Let's use all lowercase. Okay. So Mindy earlier said that she uses peppermint oil. That sounds, that's a pretty common one, isn't it? Peppermint oil? Yeah, peppermint oil is great for staying awake. So I use it, I'm a sleepy driver, so I'll use it when I'm driving. It's great for helping the brain to focus, mental acuity. So it's a great homework oil. It's also great for opening up airways. So using it a lot for congestion. It's also a natural fever reducer. So it has menthol in it. You know, if you think about peppermint, um, peppermint, anything that you put like on your skin, it feels cool to the touch. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so uh, we were talking about Margie's not feeling real great. So peppermint right. can help you uh, just feel cool over it actually will lower your body temperature. So it's a great, it's what we use kind of as an alternative fever reducer for our, our folks. Well, I was even just thinking right now with all the scare that we have with COVID-19 that um, peppermint, I mean, that's, that's what doctors are constantly trying to do or open up people's airways and get them to help them breathe easier too. Um, and different things like that. I know I have used peppermint oil. I've been given peppermint oil um, because like I said, if you guys missed it earlier, I, I teach English online part-time. And so that finds me awake at sometimes three in the morning teaching. And so I have, when I, when we've had peppermint oil in the, in the house, like I'll actually rub some on my wrists and like, just sniff it. Like while I'm teaching kids, just sniff it every once in a while. Just so it, it does seem to wake me up. Like I, I, if I don't have my coffee or anything like that, that does keep me awake. Um, I have no idea how to pronounce that. How do you pronounce that? Patchouli? Oh, patchouli. Do you have to go through a special linguist class to like do oils? Cause I think I fail. I know. Well, I've definitely learned a lot about all some plants I never knew existed. Right. <laughs> um, so I can't, for some reason, I don't see that particular comment. I was following the comments and all of a sudden. Patchouli is, she, uh, Natasha said patchouli is my calming one. Ah, yeah. So it can be really calming. It's, uh, doTERRA uses it in their focus blend. Um, yeah. And so if doTERRA makes the oil or, or 
not makes it because it comes from nature, but distributes the oil. If you go to their website and there's a search bar, you can type in whatever your favorite oil is and it'll give you safety things about it, ways it can be used, probably a little history of where it comes from, which part of the plant. So, um, huh. you know, if we go, if we go to doTERRA.com and look up patchouli, of course you have to know how to spell it too. Um, yeah, then I, that. I can tell you that um, patchouli is, it is part of the mint family and it contributes to a grounded, balanced atmosphere. So it makes perfect sense that it would be one of your calming blends. Um, it's also great for the skin. It promotes a smooth glowing complexion when applied huh. um, and it can reduce the appearance of wrinkles, blemishes and skin, skin imperfections. So there you go. There's your um, anti-stress for your brain and then anti-stress for your skin all rolled into one. That is so much fun. So is there a little, and I'm guessing you learned that through your course and stuff too. Is there, because you're looking up oils, but then I'm hearing anchoring too. So is there, there is a little bit of like, I'm going to look up this certain scent because it normally does this type of effect. Right. So there's a lot of, uh, there are a lot of great resources for looking up oils, looking up, um, body systems and finding out what's going to support them. There's a lot of information. Uh, so again, if you're a research junkie, use all of that. And I do talk about where to find all of that in the course. Uh, what I find is that a lot of us with our tired brains don't need what the whole world needs to know about patchouli, right? We just need to know, like in, stay in our lane and know what is helpful for us in this, in this season. So there's a lot to know. There's a lot that's publicly available. There's a lot that's a lot of myths. So you have to know how to sift through. So that's where, you know, being certified, having some training and knowing kind of what is fact and myth and truth and, you know, where the science is and, and where the snake oil, you know, claims are and, and all of that. It can be helpful to have someone help you discern that if you're new to it. But a lot of people know a lot already. So if you know, you know, trust what you know as well. Absolutely. Well, you guys, we are getting down to the final countdown here. So this is not a drill anymore. I need you guys to get your last minute comments and questions in here. Um, and definitely click that link. I'm gonna dress it up a little bit nicer and pin it to the top after we're done. But definitely go visit the corkboardonline.com forward slash hoot oils. You guys, it, it's a phenomenal, she's given us special pricing. This is amazing, you guys. Um, you guys are going to want to use this. This is going to be information. Like I said, Melissa's coming at this from every which angle. Um, she knows exactly what she's talking about. So you guys need to know this information because it's just something. And, and I know some of you guys are on here and you might be professionals and you're not even foster and adoptive parents. This isn't just for foster and adoptive parents. I mean, it definitely is going to help children from trauma places, but am I right? Like this information is also going to just help parents calm, like with their children, just they're going to be able to glean information from it. Right. Well, I mean, we're all facing stress even before COVID-19. And then if you are a professional, I think it's really good to know where to point people because your people are hearing about essential oils and they have questions and you might not be the person who has all the answers, which is totally okay. Cause we don't want you to have extra, right. But how can we all work together and network and say, I don't know how to, what this is, but but here's someone who does and, and vice versa, right? So I don't know all the ins and outs of what the current process is and licensing and all of that. So, um, but I would love this to be a resource. Um, and, and also just so you guys know, because you all are obviously huge fans of Transfiguring Adoption and the work that they're doing, um, a portion of all of the sales through this particular link um, go back to supporting the nonprofit and the work that Darren and Margie are doing, which is super, super important too. So we're all in this together and we're all trying Absolutely. to be as helpful to each other as, as possible. Well, you guys, we are out of time. I'm going to shut us down here. I do want to let everyone know tomorrow we are having another live reading at 1230 Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we're going to be reading uh, a couple more chapters of Serafina and the Black Cloak. Um, we chose this book, not, not only because the author gave us permission to read it, but we, we sought him 
to see if we could read it because this is a book that is really good for middle school students and high school students. I know I've been seeing a lot on the news with celebrities reading children's books and picture books to little, little kids. And there's not a lot for you guys to, to get a break from your middle school and high school students. This is gonna keep their attention. It's historical fiction. There's just the right amount of magic in it to, to engage their imagination. It uh, takes place at the Biltmore Estate in Asheville, North Carolina, if you guys know where that's at. Um, it, once we go through the book and read it, this might be uh, the next vacation that you guys wanna take because the Biltmore Mansion, um, all the staff know everything about the book and they can answer anything. Um, about anything with this. So it's, it's my family went to the estate after reading this book um, and it just made history come alive for our kids um, as well as just grow their imagination. So uh, that's gonna be tomorrow at 12.30 Eastern Standard Time. Uh, just log into the same page that you're at now and we're gonna start reading. Um, and you can just, uh, we suggest that you give your kids lunch or a snack or something so that they can be eating and, and have something to do with their hands while they're sitting and listening. So, Melissa, thank you so much for being with us. Is there anything that I missed that I needed you to talk about? You were really thorough with your questions. It's good to I talk am. to someone who doesn't know because it helps <laughs> me make resources and provide answers, especially when we're interacting live that are helpful and not again, like it all makes sense in my head, but I've been doing right. this for quite a few years now. So no, I am super excited again to be here. I will, uh, as people watch the replays, I would love to be around and answer questions. So drop your Absolutely. questions, even if you're not catching this live. And um, I would love to answer all your questions about essential oils. Thank you so much, Melissa. I know you're busy and you're amazing. So thank you so much for spending time with us. Well, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much, Darren. Hey, you guys. Hopefully we'll see you tomorrow at our book reading. If not, we're doing another watch party on Saturday too. You guys, this has been another Monday Caregiver Check-In. We'll see you next week. We hope we're helping you to nurture and grow your foster adoptive families. Love you guys. Bye.